on the warpath again. Just wipe down a wagon train. Get that grant on the wire. Why don't the government do something about it? Got to get more troops in here. This has got to stop. Mr. President, the Bureau of Indian Affairs had orders to keep peace with the Indians. And at the same time, the Army had orders to exterminate them. Feed them with one hand, kill them with the other, like fattening turkeys for Thanksgiving. Exactly. We've been driving the Indians from their food and homes in an undeclared war, making treaties and betraying them. And we wonder why they're fighting back. Our whole handling of the Indian problem has been wrong, unjust. But how can you make it right, Mr. President? Ask General Steele to come in. General Steele, please. Glad to see you, Jack. Mr. President. Gentlemen, you know General Steele? Well, you do, General. General. Gentlemen. And I'm assigning General Steele the job of once and for all making peace with the Apaches. That's impossible, Mr. President. Why? Geronimo. Geronimo? How can one man keep us from peace? In 1857, foreign troops killed Geronimo's mother, his two children, and his young wife. And he swore never to stop fighting until a thousand white men had paid for each one of them. One Indian against our whole nation? We'll change all that. That's your assignment. Most important of all, we want to make peace with Geronimo. And through him, with the whole Apache nation. And if Geronimo refuses peace? We'll give him war. Mr. Lincoln said the frontiers of this country must be made safe. I can only repeat his words. Good luck, General. Mr. President. Gentlemen. Must be out of his mind, acting like a dictator. Imagine the government furnishing food, land, blankets, houses, farming implements, horses, cattle, all free to the Indians. That's interfering with private business. They have no right to do that. It amounts to putting thousands of Indians on government charity. Our children will carry the burden for generations. It'll drive this country into bankruptcy. We're trembling on the brink of a now. Gentlemen, gentlemen, restrain your patriotism until election time. We must be practical now. What can we do to save our business with these good Indians? The only good Indian is a dead one. And there are no profits in dead Indians. We want them alive and bad. Bravo, Mr. Booth. Very well put. Do you think we might approach General Steele? General Steele? Uh, that a proper dividend might induce him to keep the Apaches alive and bad? He'd sacrifice his own mother for the army. Ah. Then perhaps uh, we ought to deal directly with the Indians? Geronimo, for instance? That's the problem, Colonel White. You will arrange the disposition of the troops according to these orders. Only 5,000 men, sir? That's all we've been allowed. But that's impossible. Why, there's 326,000 square miles to be protected. Yes, I know. That's more than 65 square miles to the man. Those are our orders, Colonel. Yes, sir. I'll be expecting you at Camp Grant soon. I'll follow you as quickly as possible. Goodbye, Colonel. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Operator. Yes, sir. Take this. Two troops, 4th Cavalry, one company of scouts, Fort Apache, Arizona. Three companies, 13th Infantry, Camp Lowell, and Tucson, Arizona. Two companies, 3rd Cavalry, one company of scouts, Fort Butler, New Mexico. 
One squadron, North Cavalry, by Navy transport to San Diego, California. March from there overland to Port Yuma, Arizona. Two troops, six cavalry, one company of scouts under my command, will be assembled at Union Station, Washington immediately. For service at General Headquarters, Camp Grant, Arizona. Lieutenant John Steele, Jr., reporting for duty with the 6th Cavalry, sir. Did you say John Steele, Jr.? Yes, sir. I didn't think you'd remember me. Why, <laughs> well, Jack, the last time I saw you, you weren't that high. Mother said it was over 15 years ago. You were with my dad. Does the general know you're coming out to serve under him? Oh, no, sir. I wanted it to be a surprise. Frontier service requires seasoned soldiers. How did you happen to be assigned? Well, I didn't happen, sir. When I read Dad was commanding the Geronimo campaign, I wrote to President Grant. See, he signed my orders himself and wrote this letter. Yes, of course. How's your mother? Well, she's over there, sir. Said she'd like to see you. Lieutenant, you will present your orders to the adjutant, Captain Williams. Mrs. Steele. Colonel White. Elner, I can't tell you how pleased I am. Imagine Jack, a West Point graduate. Why, it seems only yesterday that... It's been a great many yesterdays, David. Jack's quite grown up, planning to be married. May I present Miss Hamilton? Miss Hamilton? You must be very proud of Jack. Of course. He's his father's son, David. All army. He has a great example to follow, Elnor. I don't understand how a boy can so completely idolize a father whom he doesn't even know. I'm sorry. How, um, how is the general? Oh, he's as fit as can be. Tell me, David, how do you think he'll feel about Jack? Has he forgotten he ever had a son? Not at all, Elnor. He's as... Goodbye, young lady. Goodbye. You report to Troop A, Lieutenant. Better hurry. Remember, Jack. I said I was afraid it wouldn't work out. And if it doesn't, don't feel it's your fault, because that's the way your father is. You can always come back home. I'll remember, Mother. Goodbye, my boy. No tears, darling. You won't let Mother get lonesome, will you? No. I'll take care of it, Jack. Goodbye. I'll never see him again, either. Captain Starrett, you've been in command of this post? Yes, sir. How many men have you? Fifteen men, one sergeant, two corporals, and six scouts. Is that all? I had a full troop, sir, but fighting Indians for seven years lost most of them. I never got any replacements. When the 6th Cavalry arrives, you'll command Troop A. Yes, sir. That's all, sir. Yes. Go on, Captain Starrett. Sir. In the future, you will try to remember that our job here is to make peace with the Apaches, not to fight them. Yes, sir. You will withhold your fire unless I give you definite orders to the contrary. But, sir, those Indians are... orders! Yes, sir. If you obey more orders, you'll lose fewer men. Sneezer, what does Sneezer mean? Well, I reckon that means me, sir. You command the scouts? 
Yes, sir. What's left of them? How is it you appear on the army list as Sneezer? What's your name? Just Sneezer. Why? Well, you see, General, my ma and pa was killed by the Indians before they had a chance to christen me. And the Indians missed me when they burned the house down. I guess I laid around a couple of three days and caught a cold. Because when the rescue party raked me out of the ashes, they said I was sneezing quite a bit, so just naturally they called me Little Sneezer. Yes, well, that's all, Mr. Sneezer. Yes, sir. Mr. Rufus Gillespie, sir, of the Indian Service to see you. Show him in. How do you do, General? I've been sent here by the Indian Bureau to offer my services in this campaign against Geronimo. I... Mr. Gillespie, I know all about you. So that you won't misunderstand me, I don't trust you and don't like you. The Army needs no help from you. Whatever your so-called business may be, keep out of my way. Just as you say, General. Of course, remember, I've offered to help. I never forget. Orderly. See that Mr. Gillespie has fresh horses and supplies. And escort him to the limits of the camp. Any trouble getting across, Colonel? No, sir. Ran into a few bands of Indians, seem to be watching us all the way. Probably scouts for Geronimo. Yes, he's been deeply interested in all this sudden activity of the Army. Of course, you brought enough equipment for a long campaign. Almost none. What? The War Department refused to be rushed, sir. They promised to send our ammunition and new equipment as soon as they're ready. As soon as they're ready? Well, what are we supposed to do in the meantime? You can't fight Indians or make peace either with the War Department's promises. Yes, I know, sir. Give you a job to do and then defy you to do it. Little Napoleon, that's what he is. As long as they have generals, they're going to be hiring captain. Oh, I don't think I'm that glad to be relieved of the command. Well, what are you squawking about then? Don't you hear him? You will withhold your fire, Captain. Those are orders. Withhold your fire. Maybe he's gun shy. I had a horse. Oh, I know his kind, all right. Drill and scrub all day and let the Indian shoot you in the back. Sure is comforting to know you're clean when they kill you. Someday you're going to leave one of those drawings lying around in the wrong place. I can always say Geronimo did it, can't I? What is it about all little men that makes them think they're Napoleon? That's the trouble with you, Cap. You just don't understand us little fellas. Little? Why, you big overgrown. I'll bet that Napoleon will cut you down to size. Ain't nothing gonna cut me down. I've been out on scouting trips for four and five days without a lick of food. Come back 20 pounds heavier. Must be the goodness in me. Yes? Orders to put Lieutenant Steele's stuff in here, sir. He's quartered with you. Put him in there. Yes, sir. Who do you say that pack belonged to? I don't know. One of the officers that came in today. Hey, Orderly! What'd you say the name of that lieutenant was? Steele. Heard he was a general's son, just out of West Point. Son? Yes, sir. Now, how do you suppose he ever had a son? Nature sure does some mighty queer things. Captain Starrett? Yes. I'm Steele, sir. I've been ordered to quarters here. I hope you don't mind. Oh, make yourself at home. This is Sneezer. How do you do, sir? Nicely, thanks. Well, this is positively luxurious. I thought you'd be living in tents. Oh, well, we've got them, too. You can take your pick. And beds, too. Real beds. I never thought they'd furnish them out here. Shh! Not so loud. They ain't a scorpion or a tarantula in the country. Don't know about them beds already. Well, I, I thought I was sent out here to fight Indians. Not insects. Well, it seems we don't fight Indians anymore. We just go around letting them scalp us. That little Napoleon... <coughs> I'm sorry.
Captain Starrett, sir. Have you any idea when the general intends to meet the new officers? Probably after inspection in the morning. The general's a stickler for red tape. I'm afraid he won't know me. Won't know you? Well, he, he hasn't seen me since I was a baby. Well, he's your father, isn't he? Yes, sir. Well, this all seems pretty unreal to me. I, I mean, being out here. You see, ever since I can remember, I've dreamt of meeting him and serving under him, and, well, here I am. I... Excuse me, sir. I, I guess I'd better go unpack. Well, how do you like that? Can you imagine a kid scared to death to beat his own father? I know the man once that had a whole mess of kids and never seen a one of them. One day he was caught stealing cattle and they hung him. Just as he was dropping through the trap, he come to find out the judge, the jury, and the hangman was his own son. Yes, sir, Plum took his breath away. Mighty ragged riding. Yes, sir. They need drilling, lots of it. We'll begin at once. Who is that grinning lieutenant? Looks like a Cheshire cat. That's your son, sir. What's he doing here? President Grant signed his order, sir, personally. Well, he'll measure up to my standards. I'm sure that he will, sir. The boy idolizes you, real hero worship. There's no room for sentimentality in the army. We need seasoned men here. Yes, sir. You wish to meet the new officer, sir? Yes. This is Captain Williams, sir, in command of Troop B. Captain Williams. You've had previous Indian service? Yes, sir. Two years at Fort Dodge, Kansas. Two years at Fort Hall, Indian Territory. That's good. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Steele. Mr. Steele, you have come to us direct from West Point with no previous service. Is that correct? Yes, sir. You have a great deal to learn. I trust that you And you too, gentlemen, will measure up to our requirements. For those of you who have never been on the frontier before, it's not like home service. Sometimes peace or war with these Indians may depend upon what an officer does when he's alone. Even a second lieutenant. Yes, and you mustn't take advantage, any of you. You mustn't expect any favoritism. You young men have got to start at the bottom to learn everything. And if you don't measure up, out. That's all, gentlemen. I should have warned you when you got here. I should have known how he'd treat you. What's a son compared to his army? Never drew a human breath in his life. Little Napoleon, that's what he is. Not the great idol you think. That's a lie. What do you expect in front of everybody? I'm sorry. Mind my own business. Always shooting my mouth off. That's all right, Starrett. I know you didn't mean it.
What's so funny? You. What do you mean? Oh, the way you've been busting all over with mother love. A boy's best friend is his mother. Why don't you shut up? Well, I reckon I will. There ain't no use a man keeping on talking after he's left his sentiment engraved to posterity. Evening, ma'am. You tell Geronimo that all General Steele wants is to make him a prisoner. He wants to take Geronimo's guns away like he did those others, and then maybe kill him. Look at those other Apache chiefs who've made peace. Why, they're no better than slaves. He say he understand. Ah. It's up to you, Geronimo. You'll never be free as long as there's a single soldier left. You don't have to depend on Apaches for your fighting men. If those other chiefs want to be slaves, let them. I'll bring you warriors from every tribe in the South and West, men who want to fight. And I'll get you all the guns and ammunition you need. Hey, on. What you want for this? Why, all you got to do is to raid for gold, wherever you can. You get me enough gold, and by spring, I'll have you 3,000 warriors. And what's more, you don't have to depend on your scouts for information. I've got friends in Washington who know every move the army's going to make. Why, you'll be the greatest war chief in the world. Captain Starrett, I gave Geronimo until now to make peace. You will take as many men as you need and bring me his answer. Yes, sir. Mr. Sneezer, your scouts know where to look for Geronimo? Yes, sir, and no, sir. What? You see, sir, he's mighty slick at not being where he just was. May I take Lieutenant Steele with me, sir? No. No service experience. And remember, Captain Starrett, this is a mission of peace. I want Geronimo's answer, not your casualties. Yes, sir. That's all. Remember, Captain, this is a peace mission. You've got to kiss Geronimo. Yeah? What am I supposed to be doing while he's scalping me? Singing, Captain. Geronimo, honey, I love you. Your golden hair and eyes so blue. <laughs> What'd the general want? We're going to see Geronimo. Say, that's great. Action? No, just a social call. We're going to have tea. Oh, when do we start? I said, when do we start? It's only a small expedition, just one junior officer. me. One junior officer and he wouldn't give me the chance. Steele. Where are you going? He hasn't spoken to me since the day I got here. Well, if he won't see me as a son, he'll see me as an officer. No, Jack. The general's right. How? I came here for service and I'm given things to do. I learned in my first year at West Point. You've got to toughen up first. You can't fight Indians with school book tactics. I know what a young officer wants. He was an expert at tactics. Been studying book reading all his life. Could tell you just how Napoleon figured to win all them big battles. Then one day, a couple of Indians caught him under a rock and killed him dead. He didn't know what to do. Because Napoleon had never been under no rock trying to outsmart no engines. It's for your own good, Jack. And don't let your temper run away with you. How does he expect that kid to ever learn anything if he's going to keep him sitting on his bed all the time? Won't even let him go out on a peace detail. Mumsy, I know the man once that went about telling all the people not to lose their temper. Then one day he... Everybody liked him, though. Geronimo, honey, I love you. Your golden hair and eyes so blue. Your 
making his ride too doggone far. Come out, come out, wherever you are. We should do less singing and more scouting. That gravel soprano is driving me crazy. Yeah, me too. Wish I could coo sweet and pretty like you, Mumsy. When them engines shot that air on my throat, they just missed my windpipe. Why? And why for three whole days have we been heading east? Because that's where Geronimo is. Cap, that's where Geronimo was. Fight! I'm sorry we got here too late. I wondered why they didn't massacre the rest of us. They, they must have heard you coming. Did you get a good look at their leader? Yes, an Apache. But unlike any Indian I ever saw, he, he didn't seem human. He was like a ghost, a shadow. He'd strike and disappear. I suppose we must have fired over a hundred shots at him, but it's impossible to hit him. Geronimo. That's him, all right. Where are you from? Texas, bound for California. You get your people together and we'll escort you to Camp Grant. Thank you, Captain. Can I help you, miss? Do you think you could? Oh, I, I mean your arm. Sure, help yourself. Mmm, clean as a whistle, right through. Beats me where them engines get them high-powered repeating rifles. Oh, am I hurting you, miss? Oh, I have been handled gently. Oh, it's lucky you're fleshy. If you'd have been skinny, it might have busted your arm. It's the same with horses. I had a mare once. We were fighting Comanches. She was fleshy, too. Them Comanches just shot her rump just plumb full of holes. Never touched a bone, and she didn't set me down once. Uh -uh. There, I think this will take care of it all right. You just give it a rest, and it'll heal. Mr. Sneezer, if I'm not asking too much, would you and your scouts leave the column with me, or would you rather stay? Uh, uh, no, sir, Captain. I, I want to go back with you, sir. Come on, honey. What people we didn't lose through Indian attacks, we've lost through sickness. We haven't enough able-bodied men to get us through. Our women and children and older people need a chance to rest. We want your permission, sir, to camp here till spring. Yes, of course. We'll take care of you until you're ready to start again. Thank you very much, General. You will detail your men to help these people make camp. Yes, sir. That's all. Captain Starrett. You will discontinue any further search for Geronimo. His attack on this wagon train is all the peace answer I need. Yes, sir. I want to commend you for your fine work in bringing in these people. Thank you, sir. That's all. And Captain. Sir. You're improperly dressed. Sorry, sir. Improperly dressed. I suppose if I caught Geronimo with my hat off, it wouldn't count. Captain. What? I don't care what Napoleon says. I like you much better that way. So do I! You know, ma'am, you've been puzzling me for weeks. You don't sound like you all come from Texas. Well, I don't all come from Texas. Most of me's from New York. I believe you're making fun of me. Why, Mr. Sneezer. 
I can tell what a horse is thinking, and I can even tell what an Indian's thinking. You mean you can't tell what a woman is thinking? No, ma'am. When I want to know what a lady's thinking, I gotta ask Laura. Who's Laura? That's my horse. She's asleep now. What a beautiful friendship. Is Laura the one that got shot full of holes by the Comanches? No, oh, ma'am. That was Bessie. Poor old Bessie. Are all your friends horses? Oh, no, ma'am. Lots of people and things. Which one of those is me? Ma'am? Oh. Texas is overrun with crooked politicians, carpetbaggers from up north. We had to get out. Well, why didn't you get together and chase them out? How? We're Confederates. We lost the war. They came in to make us pay. But you're still Americans. They've no right to do it. You wouldn't think so if you saw them treat us like slaves. Rob. Kill. Tax us to death. Couldn't you do anything about it? What? Suppose you men in the army, had to serve under a superior who treated you worse than dogs, who had the power to make your life unbearable, what would you do? Get out of the army. Exactly. That's why we're getting out of Texas. Well, what have you got to look forward to in California? Well, everything. New country, opportunity. Above all, a chance to be free again chance to make our lives as we want them. Nobody to order us about, tell us what we can do or can't. Oh, I know. Pioneering's hard. But it's worth it. You bet it is. It's worth anything, any hardship. To be able to call your soul your own. Caution's all taken for the night, sir. Very good, Colonel. Orders for tomorrow, sir. Inspection and review in the morning. Rations and supplies to the Indians in the afternoon. Yes, sir. Is that all, sir? Colonel, have, have you seen the boy, Lieutenant Steele, lately? I saw him just a few moments ago. How is he getting along? He seems very unhappy. I'm, I'm rather concerned about him. I've just been wondering. Perhaps I've been too severe with him. Too much army. He's a very sensitive boy. Yes. Like his mother that way. Perhaps I ought to talk to him. Get to know him better. It would mean a great deal to him. I will, love. Yes, I'll talk to him. Sometime. I'm resigning from the army. And I want you and Alice to come here so that we can join this wagon train when it leaves for California in the spring. It will be a chance for all of us to start our lives over again. Gentlemen, I'm not in the habit of explaining orders. We are faced with a serious crisis. Geronimo is ready and eager for war. Because he knows by now that we're not prepared, that our guns are obsolete, and that we haven't enough ammunition for a three-day engagement. Unless you're anxious to be massacred, and all these women and children with you, you will restrain your impetuousness. You understand? Mr. Sneezer, repeat the last report of your scouts. Well, it's just as I said, sir. Thousands of warriors from every tribe in the South and West been gathering here all winter, fully armed with new repeating rifles and ammunition. Something I ain't never seen before. Engines that's been natural enemies all their lives, letting Geronimo lead them against us. Within a week, our supplies should be here, if nothing happens to them. 
New rifles and ammunition that will give us a fighting chance. A chance to discharge our duties as soldiers of the United States Army. Until then, under no circumstances, will any officers or troops leave the limits of this fort. I'll give the order for action when I'm ready. That's all, gentlemen. Dismissed. Mr. Sneezer, I want to talk with you. Yes, sir. Our ammunition train is coming up from Prescott. You will take a half a company of your best scouts, meet the wagons and escort them here by way of Mescal Pass. It means two days without water until you get to the river. But for that reason, it's the safest route. Yes, sir. You understand the importance of keeping those wagons out of Geronimo's hands. Everything will depend upon their safe arrival here. That's all. Yes, sir. What are you doing here, Mr. Steele? I dismiss the officers. I want to speak to you alone, sir. Why, yes. Thank you, sir. Yes, been wanting to talk with you myself. Meaning to for a long time. Never got around to it. What is it? I wish to resign from the Army, sir, effective at once. Just as we are preparing for action. I begged for action six months ago, but not now. Why? Because I've changed. You've made me change. I tried to make a soldier out of you. A man to be proud of. Well, I'll tell you what you've made. You've made me hate the Army. Of course, you don't mean the Army. You mean me. I was afraid that you didn't have what it takes to make a good soldier. I'll keep your resignation under advisement. You might as well know my mother and my fiancé are on their way out. They'll be here on the stagecoach today. What? I didn't tell you sooner because I knew you'd stop them, but it's too late now. You mean that you permitted two women alone, your mother, to travel across country with hostile Indians, thousands of them on the warpath? Why don't you protect them? That's your job, isn't it? They're entitled to your protection just as well as anybody else. Your mother, your fiancé, you brought them... Well, you needn't worry that you'll have us on your hands. We're leaving for California with a wagon train just as soon as they're ready to start. I'll show you I can take care of them without your army or without you. Mr. Steele. If you're so worried about me, why don't you think about it when I was a baby, when I needed you, when she needed you. But I'm growing now and I can get along without you or without your rotten tenor, Steele. You are under arrest for insubordination. You will remain confined to your quarters. But General Steele's been too smart for you. Why, you've tried all winter to make him move his troops out of that fort, and you haven't been able to do a thing. And you know that as long as he stays there, you can't touch him. He's not going to come out in the open until he gets good and ready. And when his ammunition gets here, you haven't got a chance. But I'll show you how to bring him out. That's what I came here for. I'll show you how to get him so mad, he'll come out of that fort before night. He'll come heading right here, looking for you. That's putting him right in your hands, isn't it? There's a stagecoach coming from the east, right now. <laughs> Lieutenant, when it gets too hot, you gotta look for shade. A horse will learn you that. If he thinks he's gonna keep me from going to meet Mother and Alice, he's wrong. All right. 
Sorry, Jack. Saddled him myself. Thanks, Bill. On the back. In my orders to the contrary, you will leave camp and meet it. Yes, sir. I want you to escort it here. Do whatever is necessary to provide the ladies, the passengers, your fullest protection. Yes, sir. sign of steel yet. Well, he got a pretty good start on us. We better get going. I got a mighty funny feeling about something. Geronimo? I don't know, just something. <laughs> Keep your men here 
Turn covers if we're attacked. Yes, sir. Here, Jack. Let him do this. He wouldn't let me meet him. I could have saved him. He wouldn't even let me save my own mother. I know. He wouldn't let me fight. I'll show him I'll fight. I'll fight alone. I'll get you on him over. Easy, Jack. Easy. You can't fight him alone. The general's right. The general's right. The general's right. That's all I've heard. How can he be right when he lets this happen? We better get back to the doctor, Cap. The young lady's still alive. He might be able to save her. Thank you, that's all. Yes, sir. Tell your men to get the young lady to the hospital and have them take care of the driver and the guards. Yes, sir. Then forward. Lieutenant Steele. Any of you men see Lieutenant Steele? Yes, sir. He left us about 10 miles back. Left us? Yes, sir. He lighted out across country, going fast, too. Yes, Captain. You met the coach. Yes, sir. Well, I, I'm relieved. Relieved to see you back. I was, uh, I was a little concerned. Please ask the ladies to come in. Well, no. No. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll receive them myself.
murders the young lady. The hospital, sir. Badly hurt? We don't know yet. Will you ask my son to come here, please? He's gone, sir. It's my fault. I helped him disobey your orders. I guess he kind of went out of his head when he saw this. Said he was going to get Geronimo. Hello. He says your animals got him and that we're afraid to come after him. Let me take some men. I'll go after Let the boy. Start. Geronimo's attack on this coach was intended for exactly what you want to do. But we will not go into action until we are prepared. But you can't leave your own son to be tortured and killed. I can't sacrifice the lives of hundreds of people to rescue one man. Not even my own son. How can you let Those that... Those are orders, sir. Colonel, you will sound assembly, please. I want to hold services. For my wife. Yes, sir. Too bad I got to meet that ammunition train. Why? I'd go with you. What do you mean? When you're trailing engines, Cap, you mustn't leave no tracks behind. Well, somebody's got to go after the kid. Don't you reckon that's the old man's job? Sure it is, but he's not human. Maybe not, but he sure learned me the meaning of two words. Good soldier. Well, luck. Same to you. I got a mighty queer hunch we're both gonna need it. Jack!
You tell Geronimo what he won't know about Jero. I don't know, I tell you, I don't know. <gasps> you tell if General got new ammunition yet. How many rifles? How many soldiers? When he come fight for Geronimo? Well, I won't, I won't tell you! I won't tell you, I don't care what you do to me, I won't tell you! Stop it! Stop it! I won't tell you! David, all my life I believed honestly that sentimentality has no place in the army. But I'm going after my boy. I'll go with you, sir. This job is my own. I failed her. I'm failing the army now. But I'm not going to fail him. Please send Captain Starrett here. He left last night. After the boy. I might have known. Good soldier, Starrett. A sentimental fool. Now, we find out about General. She's there too. Tell maybe. Oh, I won't be. Don't tell, Jack. Don't tell. Don't tell him. 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 I told you we'd get him out. He's leading troops through the pass, heading this way, scouting for you. They'll be here by morning. Oh, there, could they say? She's dead, could she say? She's dead, could she say? Ah! Ah! She's dead, could she say? You're dead, could she say? You're dead, could she say? You're dead, could she say? Where you go? Oh, I said, what are you going to do? Geronimo say this rock's bad place fight, General. Too many soldiers. More better trap them below. On island. Hold them there. And what then? We send for old warrior you get for Geronimo. 3,000, maybe? Yes. When they come here, we kill all soldiers. The general, too? Oh, no. The Hugo. Geronimo killed general himself. He swear. And what about them? We leave them here. Alive? Live cub. More better for catch bear. Well, uh, I, I've done everything I promised. There's, there's nothing, nothing more for me to do. I think. Geronimo want you stay. I can't. If the general sees me and they tell him that... Not that, Kote. You like stay? Sure, I'll stay. Kote. in the rock, sir. He left him there, staked out. Alive? I couldn't tell, sir. I didn't get close enough. And the Indians? No, sir. Not an engine in sight, sir. He's making it too easy for us, like baiting a trap. Detail! Forward! Go!
I can't understand it. Why did they stop firing? It's weird, ain't it? Attacked us sudden, get us ambushed, shooting from all sides, and then just as sudden, uh, there ain't a sound. How's it feel? <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, I know. So quiet, it scares you. What do you suppose Geronimo is up to? I don't know, but he ain't up to no good. Pendere, Nevejo, Wuto, Wajoneta, Kenzo, Rajuta, hey! What I say? Geronimo, say you take flag truce. You tell General, come here, alone. Geronimo, want surrender? No, 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 I can't do that. The general will know you want to kill him and... Look, Geronimo, you've got those soldiers ambushed on the island. They can't get away. Tomorrow you'll have all your warriors. You can get the general then and all his troops besides. And Geronimo then... no care about Pelicano soldiers. He want general alone, now. But I can't go down there. He knows what I've done for you. You go. You take your hands off me. I'm an American. I'll have the whole army out after you. Yes, yes, yes. Don't, please. Don't, 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 please. Please, I'll, I'll bring the general for you. What's that, a flag of truce? Certainly looks like it. Come on.
They're sending a flag of truce, sir. It's Gillespie. You two get out of sight. this attack and I traveled 200 miles to get here. I'm still a servant of the government, you know. You refused my help once, but I'm offering it again. If I'd known sooner, I would have stopped all this, this awful bloodshed. But you see, he'd, he'd already started on the war path be before I... I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Those are mighty fine rifles you supplied the Indians, Gillespie. We're no match for them. Seven shot repeaters. I didn't do anything. I didn't I tell you. I, I was trying to make peace. You see those wounded? And the dead. We can't even get out to bury them. I didn't do anything. You, you, you can't do anything to me. I'm not doing this, Mr. Gillespie. They are. They want you to know the feel of your own bullets. Uh, McNeil. Yes, sir. This man is your prisoner. See that he keeps shooting until he draws the fire of every Indian on that bank. Our guns don't shoot as clean as yours, but they make mighty nasty sores in the back. Get going. Yes, sir. Cote Pelicano. Tanzo. Keep shooting and don't miss. sir, all around us. Must be over 2,000 of them and more coming every minute. How many men at last roll call? 16. 10 wounded who might be able to help. If Sneezer were only here, I, I'd send him. They don't even know if he's alive. Let me go, sir. I'll get back to Camp Grant. Oh, it's too dangerous. I mean, you haven't had enough experience. You have to go right through their lines. I'll go, sir. No, I can't spare you. Those odds, 2,000 to 16, that won't make any difference. You never get through. If I do get help, the others may have a chance. If I don't, it won't matter much. Let me go with him. One of us will surely make it. No, I told you no. You once said there'd be no favoritism. That ought to work both ways. Very well. Thank you, sir. Good luck, Captain. Thank you, sir.
tell you, never mind me. Go on, I'll all be massacred. <laughs> You let me stop. There's no sense shooting in the dark. They won't shoot back. They know I came to make peace. Uh, why don't you let me stop? I've been through. I want to thank you for your courage. Almost any minute now, they'll start their attack. A handful of us against 3,000. I know I don't have to tell you to keep fighting to the last. If we've got to die, we'll die like soldiers. Now, get to your posts and good luck, men. like he's dying. Clancy told me he's hit the first day, but he didn't want anybody to know about it. He's a good soldier, all right, but too strict. Too much drilling and polishing. I wonder if they'll send out to take his place. Well, what difference will that make to us? coming to our house. Well, there's only one thing to do. Get ready, man. We're going to go through them. <laughs>
the ammunition away from them troops. Mr. General! Look at them engines, there's thousands of them. We're gonna attack any minute. To massacre them troops. They ain't got a living chance. Well, we gotta give them that chance. We gotta give them ammunition, and right now before the attack. You're crazy. You can't get a wagon across to that island. Well, maybe I can't, but I can sure try. See there! Amazing! Amazing! See there! That's a shift off of 200 feet. I miss my foot, and I can always bounce back. Good suggestions? Mighty near not finding us. Where's my dad? He's.
Your prisoner, sir. Captain William Starrett, for most distinguished gallantry in action. Captain Starrett, you gave your life in the sacred cause of duty to your country. You died that your companions in the 6th Cavalry might live. You set an example of devotion and high ideal of service, which will stand always as a great goal to be followed by the men and officers of your regiment and by the whole army. In the absence of any next of kin, this Medal of Honor, awarded to you posthumously in the name of Congress, is presented to your regiment for safekeeping. So long as there are such men as you, the frontiers of this country will always be safe. Mm -hmm.